What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today we are going to talk about these two Lavie wireless sets. They both come with built-in microphones, they also are able to plug in microphone sets and there are more features that I need to compare here, especially looking at the different feature sets and price points as well as the quality of these two different sets. Wireless microphone sets are pretty incredible, especially since they got so tiny and also relatively speaking cheap. Now comparing that to about 10 years ago where I had a YouTube channel with a friend of mine about baking where we invested in Sennheiser wireless library microphones and their one set costs around 600 US dollars. Now today you can get one set for under 200 dollars. However, it is important to know that of course you're still paying the price for the quality you get. But let's start at the very beginning. Lavier microphones overall are incredibly useful. They are tiny most of the time, you can tuck them away in clothing. You also have the ability to walk away from the camera and be also turned away from the camera. You can interview people with them. You can set things up very, very nicely. However, they don't necessarily provide the utmost sound quality or audio quality depending for your needs. Usually bigger microphones with bigger membranes are also going to give you a better result in terms of the audio quality recorded. However, these microphones definitely have their place because they are so versatile and they have their special use cases where number one, you want to walk away from the camera and also if you are in an environment where it is very important to have a small microphone and also a microphone that is very close to the sound source because you can do these up here on the collar of a speaker for example. You can also hide them inside of a costume for the purpose of a short film for example. Now some of these benefits you're also able to get with using an extension cord and a Lavier set like the SmartLav Plus or the Lavier Go from Rode. However, that heavily depends on how many people are moving around the set because they might trip over the cord and also on how much movement your person will have in front of the camera or how much you want to be moving. I'm specifically mentioning this if you want to start using a Lavier microphone, for example, for your YouTube creations in studio. You most certainly don't need a wireless connection unless you plan on moving a lot. Like for example, I mentioned in the video of live streaming for yoga teachers or other fitness teachers, that is a very good use case for a Lavier microphone with a wireless connection because then you just don't have to worry about whether you are talking toward the camera or the microphone or not because the microphone just simply stays with you. For a use case like the one that I'm using right now, for example, in a kind of creator set with a standing person just talking head, it would be very easy to use a wired connection here with an extension cord and a Lavier microphone. This would have the great benefit that it does not need any battery and it is also significantly cheaper than purchasing a wireless connection set. However, in this video I'm specifically talking about the wireless connections and the wireless devices and also the difference between the two in the sound comparison as well as what impact the wireless components have on the sound quality. So let's jump right in. First, an overview of what comes in the box as well as the raw feature sets of each individual kit. Then we're going to talk about the audio quality. Now starting with the Rode Wireless Go, you'll get one receiver and one transmitter. The receiver has a small display and it displays the connectivity as well as the battery status of both devices. It also has the capability of changing the gain in three steps and also shows a level on the audio that is coming through. So you know how loud it is and if it is actually receiving something. Then we also have the wireless connection status. Now on the transmitter on the other hand, you only get two LED lights which indicate the connectivity, the battery status and also when you're charging the device that also displays the charging. Now the transmitter actually has a built-in microphone which is true for both of these kits so you can just start using this as it is as a Lavier microphone by clipping it to your clothing of some sorts. This is very handy if you just want to use it this way. However, I personally don't necessarily love that because it is rather big if you want to clip this to a collar like so for example. Yes, this is doable but it's rather large. However, to have this complete, the Wireless Go also comes with a little windscreen that you can clip on top of here and then you have a windscreen protected microphone and you can just start using it this way. 
There is even an adapter that you can kind of hold it with a longer stick for interview purposes, for example. Now talking about the windscreen, if you have gotten your wireless go a couple months, maybe years ago, please make sure to register it on the road website for warranty purposes because you might be eligible to get a replacement for the windscreen because they actually improved these to make them hold better on top of here so that they don't fall off as easily. And there is a free replacement service if you have the previous version. Now, if you just bought your wireless go or you are going to buy it now, maybe this is not the case. Maybe you already get the newest versions but it's still worth registering your Rode Wireless Go on the Rode website to see if you're eligible or not. You'll find a link to the Rode website down below. Now the transmitter also features a mic port, kind of like the one you have on your camera, and you can plug in any kind of microphone there. This can be a Lavier Go, this can be any other Lavier that has this type of connection. It can also be a Rode VideoMic NTG, for example, if you want to have a wireless solution for that. Now, on the other hand, the receiver has the same port and that is the one going out to the camera. So it's kind of like an auxiliary port that you then plug into the camera. And for the purpose of connecting this to any device, Rode actually ships it with two cables, one TRS to TRS cable, which is the cable that you want to use with cameras. This is signified by the three golden rings. And then we have the TRRS cable to TRS cable, whereas this one goes into your camera and the gray one goes into your smartphone, for example. So that's really useful that the Rode Wireless Go can be used with cameras as well as smart devices like smartphones. Last but not least, for charging, the Wireless Go uses USB-C and you can actually use any USB-C cable, which includes USB-C to USB-C cables, like the ones used to charge your MacBook Pro or iPad Pro or other USB-C devices. Now, Rode actually ships with USB-A to USB-C cables and they actually ship with both of them, so you can actually charge both your Rode Wireless Go devices, the transmitter, as well as the receiver at the same time, depending on if you have a wall plug or not. Now, that is something that you will have to get yourself. The wall plug is not included in this kit. Now, the Rode Wireless Go does not ship with an additional Lavier microphone, so you only get the inbuilt microphone right here. If you want to use something like this, you will have to buy it additionally. Rode actually makes the Lavier Go, which is a microphone that is dedicatedly made for the Rode Wireless Go, hence the name. However, I personally use the Rode SmartLav Plus with an adapter because the SmartLav Plus is made for smartphones. And so I needed to get the adapter from TRRS cable to a TRS connection because the Wireless Go is actually a TRS connection. If I were to make the same investment again, I would probably just go for the Rode Laviego to not have this additional point of failure to need this adapter. And one more thing, both of these units as well as the Comica feature a clip at the bottom so that you can actually clip the thing to your collar. You can also clip it to your belt or something like that. And on the receiver end, you can just slide this into the camera cold shoe mount so that you can just put it on top of your camera and have it not dangle around or anything like that, which is kind of useful. So that was the basic overview of the Rode Wireless Go and the Smart Love Plus or Love Ye Go. Now let's talk about the Comica Boom XD2 as well as other versions. And it is a worthy contender to the Rode Wireless Go for some specific reasons. Number one, there are actually tons of different versions of the Comica Boom XD, because this one here that I have is the version where you have one receiver and two transmitters. This is very useful if you want to, for example, set two people up at the same time to have them speak in an interview kind of way. So that is one of the main reasons why this actually is a great version to get. Now there are other versions, for example, you can also just get one transmitter and one receiver, then of course you can only record one person at a time. However, there are also versions that have the receiver specifically modified for different purposes. For example, this here is the kind of normal microphone cable version that you can plug into your camera or smartphone with additional adapters. 
Now there are other versions of the same thing that are connected via USB-C, micro USB, as well as lightning port. That is specifically interesting for people that only film with their smartphones. However, personally, I would never go for that because I would not want to have to throw away a whole microphone set just because I'm upgrading my phone, for example. So I personally would always go for the version that is just normal auxiliary cable, mic cable, whatever you want to call that, and just connect it with adapters because then I have the versatility to also use this with all kinds of other devices when I'm upgrading my gear. For example, if you start filming with your smartphone and you want to use something like this, you buy one of those other connector types and later you upgrade to a normal camera with a mic jack and you stop using this because you just simply can't use it anymore since it doesn't connect. So this here is the version that I would go for. Now what I have here is the Boom XD2, which signifies that it has one receiver and two transmitters and other things in the box. Of course, you have the transmitters with their built-in microphones. You also get one receiver. Then you also have the Lafayette microphones, which you can connect to your transmitters and also their respective wind fluffs. Then you also get two wind fluffs for the two transmitters so that you can use those in more windy environments. And you also get multiple connections to camera, smartphone, and so on. There's one cable, which is a TRS to TRRS cable, which connects the whole thing to a smartphone. Then you also have the TRS to TRS cable, which can connect everything to your camera. And if you have a camera that has specifically loud input, then you can also use the attenuated cable, which reduces the gain signal a little bit. And lastly, you also get one USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and you're supposed to charge three devices with one cable, which is kind of annoying, so you might want to get a couple more of those. Now this is very impressive, especially considering that the Rode Wireless Go only comes with one transmitter, one receiver, and no Lavier microphone. If you want to get the Rode Wireless Go with a Lavier microphone, that is around 325 US dollars. So the Rode Wireless Go for 200 and the Lavier Go for about 100 to 125. In this case, with the Comica Boom XD2, for about $250, you actually get two transmitters, one receiver, and the Lavier microphones already in the package. If you only want one wireless connection, you can also get the version from Comica, which has one receiver, one transmitter, as well as the Lavier microphone, and that's about $190. US dollars. Now there is the option to build the Rode Wireless Go up to the same point of the Comica Boom XD2. However, at that point you're spending about 650 US dollars because you need two wireless sets from Rode Wireless Go. You also need two microphones, the Lavier Go for example, and last but not least, you also will need a splitter for your microphone jack so that you can actually record left and right channels separate from each other for those two Lavier sets. But don't just make your decision on price because there are more differences to come. But before talking about those differences, let's talk about the Comica and their respective details. Now a couple details about the receiver. You have a headphone jack, so in case your camera doesn't feature a headphone jack, you can use that to monitor the signal that is coming through. Then we also have the mic output, which you can use with the different cables to connect to your camera or other devices. Personally, for me, if I'm using it with the Canon EOS R, I will use the normal TRS to TRS connection, which is the black black cable and not the black orange cable, because the specific inbuilt camera audio interface actually expects a little bit of a louder signal. So that's the point of that. If you have a Panasonic or a thing, also Sony camera, you might want to use the attenuated cable for a less hot signal. Then moving on, we have a couple of buttons on the side. You have a reset knob, then you also have a mode switch and on off switch, which I'm gonna talk about later with the mode switching. Then you also have the gain level for each individual channel or stereo set. Then on the other hand, you also have a USB-C port and a display. On the display, you see the mode that you're in, the battery levels, as well as the sound signal that is coming through. However, not really that responsive and good for gauging whether or not there is signal, not necessarily whether or not it's loud or not. Then you also have below that the gain level for the individual channels. 
But that's it with the receiver, now let's talk about the transmitter. First we have a USB-C port for charging, then we have the little reset thing. On the other hand there are buttons, the on-off switch as well as for muting, and we have a pair button. Then we also have a built-in microphone, the mic jack so that you can plug in a lavier microphone, and a display which displays you the connectivity, the microphone whether or not it's muted or not, the battery status and the gain level of this specific microphone. The transmitter also features the inbuilt microphone as well as a mic jack where you can plug in a lavier and there's also this little clamp here that protects it from being pulled out. It's a nice little addition. So that's the overview of the Boom XD. Now let's talk about more of the specific features that you get when using one or two different microphone sets with this specific receiver and also the capabilities with mono or stereo mode. First up, if you are using the set with one receiver and one transmitter, then you have the capability of using the mono mode. In this mode, the signal from the one transmitter gets basically put on both channels, left and right, and that way you have a just normal signal. The same thing is true if you have two transmitters and one receiver in mono mode again, then the signal from both of these transmitters is put on both channels, left and right. Now, a great thing about this mode, however, is that you can actually change the gain on the left and right channel, because with the buttons on the side of the receiver, you can actually change the gain of each of the channels in this mono mode, which means that the left and the right are recorded in different loudness. That is great, because this way you can actually have a safety track recording of your two speakers or one person speaking, and you can use that in the editing process, that if the audio signal clipped at some point, you can go back and use the second channel as your backup basically. Now talking about stereo mode, if you switch to that, you just simply click the mode button and then you are in stereo mode and that means that if you are using two different microphone sets with one receiver, both of the signals are actually recorded on one channel each. So you have one microphone on the left side and one microphone on the right hand side. This is amazing because if you are doing any kind of stereo recording or if you are doing interviews with two different people, then you actually have both of the microphones on separate channels and you can also decide later on how you want to use that. That is especially useful, especially for interview scenarios, for example, where one person is speaking louder than the other, or if you have one person making noises or sounds while the other person is speaking and you want to pull those out. That is possible when you are using the stereo mode on this specific set. Now a few more things about the Boom XD2 that you might want to know about when using it. One thing is that if you put all three devices right next to each other, usually the connectivity between the B transmitter and the receiver gets lost a lot. Now this apparently is because the signals between these devices basically get mixed up way too much and it is no longer possible to kind of like decide which one is which and such things. As soon as you start moving them apart, however, and you put about 40-50 centimeters between the receiver and the transmitters, the problem goes away. Now the distance between the two transmitters doesn't really mean anything. However, the distance between the two transmitters and the receiver. Another thing is about charging. These devices are charged via USB-C. However, as I mentioned before, this only comes with one USB-A to USB-C charging cable to charge all three devices. So either you have more lying around or you have to charge one each after another. Then the other problem is that yes, they have USB-C plugs. However, as I've mentioned on this channel multiple times, these are one of the devices that also don't charge with real USB-C to USB-C cables. I have tested this with multiple different USB-C cables, data cables, charging cables, charging bricks, charging battery bricks, charging wall plugs, everything doesn't work. These are only capable of using USB-A to USB-C charging cables for whatever reason. And as a reminder, the Rode Wireless Go does not have this problem. The Rode Wireless Go can be charged with a MacBook charger, with an iPad Pro charger. It doesn't really matter. Any USB-C to USB-C cable works fine. 
But moving on from this little rant, it is still remarkable that you can get two microphone sets with one receiver able to record in stereo to left and right channels separately from each other with Lavier microphones included in the package and all that for about 250 US dollars. That is a remarkable package. However, let's check how it sounds and compares on that front as well. One thing up front, I have a video on my channel which is about an hour long and there are a ton of different microphone tests with foam windscreen, without foam windscreen, Lavier microphones, podcast microphone, XLR USB microphones, as well as the Rode VideoMic NTG and more. So if you want to check that out, I have the link in the description down below so that you can listen for yourself and also jump through with the chapter markers to see which microphone might be the best for your specific job, depending on what you want to do with it. And there you will hear how these different microphones compare to each other with this specific scenario when being right up close to the microphone as well as farther away and farther away from the camera as well. So check that out in the description below. Now, generally speaking, I'm not here to make a technical analysis of the audio signal. I just did a couple of test recordings and I'm gonna show you those here, as well as in the aforementioned video where there are more tests and more comparisons. However, I want to kind of demonstrate how these different inbuilt microphones as well as Lavier microphones compare to each other so that you might be able to judge for yourself whether or not it's worth spending more money or if it may be the better deal to get the Comica with the two transmitters, one receiver and all that. So let's jump right in with the inbuilt microphones. Now, generally speaking, the inbuilt microphones aren't necessarily amazing. They both have that problem that they are really close to the whole body, so it means that you really have the whole thing hanging on your collar or wherever you want to use it. They're also not really that great in quality. However, if I were to make a judgment, I would say the Rode microphone sounds a little cleaner, a little nicer overall. The Comica microphone, on the other hand, has a huge problem with handling noise because of the microphone body transporting that handling very much to the microphone. Now here you can hear the comparison for yourself. This is the comparison between the inbuilt microphones of the Rode Wireless Go and the Comica Boom XD. This is how it sounds in this type of room. This is the comparison between the inbuilt microphones of the Rode Wireless Go and the Comica Boom XD. This is how it sounds in this type of room. And this is how it sounds when I'm not speaking. Now having heard that, the handling noise is one thing, the other thing is also the room noise or the room echo that is very much picked up by pretty much both of these microphones. But again, I would prefer the Rode Wireless Go. Now let's talk about the Smart Laugh as well as the Comica Lavier microphone and how that changes the picture. Now keep in mind that the Comica actually ships with a Lavier for each transmitter. The Rode does not, so I had to pick out my own microphone for that. A couple years ago I actually picked up this Rode Smart Laugh Plus and also the adapter because I want to use it with my phone, sometimes with my camera. However, now, a couple years later, I would probably go for the Rode Lavier Go, which is specifically made for the wireless Go. It is probably updated. It has a TRS connection so that it does connect to your camera directly or the wireless Go and you would have to buy an adapter if you were to want to use it with your smartphone. Now how is the sound difference between these two Lavier microphones? This is a direct comparison between the Smart Laugh Plus comparing it to the Comica Lavier microphone both connected at the same time so that we have the exact same comparison they are connected with a extension cord directly to the camera with no wireless component between them. This is how they sound in this type of room with my voice. This is a direct comparison between the Smart Laugh Plus comparing it to the Comica Lavier microphone. This is how they sound in this type of room with my voice. And this is how silence sounds. Now this comparison was specifically recorded without any wireless components in between, so yet that you can listen in on just the microphone directly connected to the camera and recording that. 
Now, in my opinion, the Rode sounds a little better compared to the Comica. The Rode also has a much nicer cable, which is thinner and also easier to form and hide away. It also is, in general, thinner and smaller in terms of the microphone itself. However, the audio signal coming out of the Comica is actually a little louder than with the Smart Laugh, which is also probably because of the microphone capsule being a little bigger. But at the end of the day, it really should sound better because with the Comica, you get the Lavier included in the whole package. With the Smart Lav Plus or the Wireless Go, you will have to go out and buy the Lavier yourself. And that's around 70 to 125 US dollars or euros, depending on when you get it and which version you get, if you get the Rode Smart Lav Plus or the Lavier Go. But now what's the difference if you use the Comica wireless component or the Rode wireless components? To get a sense for that, I actually used the different Lavier microphones on both of the other sets, and here are the audio comparisons. This is a comparison between the Rode Smart Lav Plus and the Comica Lavier that ships with the box, both connected with their respective manufacturer's wireless devices. This is how they sound with my voice in this type of room. This is a comparison between the Rode Smart Lav Plus and the Comica Lavier that ships with the box, both connected with their respective manufacturer's wireless devices. This is how they sound with my voice in this type of room. And this is how silence sounds. This is a comparison between the Smart Lav Plus and the Comica Lavier microphone, respectively connected to the other competitor's wireless set. This is how they sound with my voice in this type of room. This is a comparison between the Smart Lav Plus and the Comica Lavier microphone, respectively connected to the other competitor's wireless set. This is how they sound with my voice in this type of room. And this is how silence sounds. Now it's decision time, and it is surely not an easy one, considering all these feature, price, and sound differences. For me personally, if I were to know I want one wireless connection between camera and speaking person, I would go for the Rode Wireless Go with the Rode Lavier Go. Those two have a strong build quality, they have great sounding audio, and also the wireless connection has little noise floor. Now, if however, the setup is a little bit of a different one and you know, or I would know that I would do a lot of interviews, then I would definitely consider the Comica Boom XD2, specifically for the purpose of having two microphone sets that I can use on both of the people speaking, have them separate in left and right channels and record all of that at the same time. Additionally, it is also three times less expensive to go with the Comica Boom XD2 in comparison to using two Rode Wireless Go with two Lavier Go and an additional audio splitter as well. However, then there's also the audio difference and that makes it really hard to decide because oftentimes those interviews are things that only happen one time and maybe it would be worth it to invest the money to get the higher quality set to also capture the highest quality possible. But that's also the point where it's very valid to just make it happen with whatever you have and step up your game from there. So starting out, it might be a great upgrade to go from an on-camera microphone for your interviews to even having the Comica with those two Lavier microphones and it is a stepping stone between going to other setups. Now, if you want to build the same feature with the Rode Wireless Go, you have to go with two Rode Wireless Go sets, also two Lavier Go's from Rode or other microphones if you choose to get other ones, and also a adapter which can then connect to the camera so that you have the left and right channel differentiated. Now, that kind of kit would cost around 650 US dollars, and it would give you the same features as the one kit from Comica for about 250. 
Now Rode actually released a couple products on this lineup that help you achieve that stereo set. Basically they released a little bit of a plate that makes your cold shoe mount on top of your camera into two cold shoe mounts so that you have the ability to put two microphones there, maybe one wireless go and one video mic NTG, but they also have shown the possibility to record with two lavier microphones, so two wireless go sets. And they also now sell a cable which connects to the camera and then you plug in two different microphones on either end and then you have that separation between left and right channel. However, I personally would say that those probably are more expensive than if you just go to Amazon and buy one of those cables yourself, like the one that I have here, which is around $5 or so and gets the job done. Closing up, this was another massive microphone comparison and there are actually a couple more coming as well as already on my channel. There's the one big test comparison video and then there are also more in-depth videos about different types of microphones. So if you wanna check those out, those are also linked in the description down below. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts about this comparison here, please leave those in the comment section down below as well as your questions because then I can answer them there or I can make a video specifically about that whatever you want to know. Overall, these two kits are really incredible. They're tiny, they're USB rechargeable, they sound great, and relatively speaking, they are also cheap. Comparing that to the Sennheiser kit that I had about 10 years ago, that was about 600 euros per kit, and now you get the same thing for half and even less. Now the decision is in your hands and I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like so that other people can find this as well. It helps out a tremendous amount with the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this as well as on other topics and I will see you in the next one. Ciao ciao!